the basic question that you have, you may be very willing to listen to the other. But it may be not so easy as you thought it is. And why is that? Because you may have certain things, Raymond Panikar said things that you believe so much that you don't even believe that you believe them. So it's a little like the light. We see, but we don't see the light. So you're not even aware of some very, very underlying presuppositions. So this is what Panikar uh, called mythos, myth. And it may be that we are so much in a certain myth that when we dialogue with another person, we are not at the beginning, or may not be aware that he is in a different myth, that he is in a different perspective. And so we may actually, so Panikar makes a distinction between two kinds of dialogue, a dialectical dialogue, and the dialogical dialogue. He says in the dialectical dialogue, it's more about debate. The underlying mythos of the dialectical dialogue is the world is there, it's objective, we share it. It's a truth if you want. So if we start to dialogue, why do we start to dialogue? Because I'm saying something, <clears throat> you say something different. So one of us, either both of us are wrong, or if one of us is right, then the other must be wrong. And so if we have the dialogue little by little, we can see where the problem lies, and so we can advance our knowledge. And so with each step in our dialogue, we move closer to truth, which is also one. And so you have the principle of non-contradiction, which means you cannot have two truths which are valid at the same time. Now, when you apply this, once you have Again, I'm giving you these things like this, but before you were aware of this, look at lots of the literature in anthropology and so on, very ethnocentric. We didn't realize. And then only at some point, when you start to realize where the problem is, then we can change our, our approach. So, using this dialectical framework is led. I'm not going into the details because I'm seeing that the time, I'm too talkative and time is always flying much faster than what I'm hoping. Um, but it leads to the fact that very often we construct the other as an inverted image of ourselves. And in many cases, in an inferior way. That's what happened a lot with the uh, studies in the uh, Western social sciences. So for example, when we discovered cultures, oral cultures, like many traditional African cultures, where there's no writing, because there is no codes, there, there is no such law as we have. Now, for a lawyer, there's a Latin saying, ubi societas ibi use, where there's a society, there is law. So feelings, they must have law, because everybody has law, and they organize themselves. But, okay, they don't have codes, and then it's all mixed up with religion, and it's mixed up with morals, and it's, and it's not very clear. Okay, they have law, but it's not yet perfect way of having law. This whole evolutionary idea, yeah? evolutionism. The other cultures are on lower steps of development. So by doing this, do you really understand the other? No. You just construct him as, oh, I'm the civilized one, and he's the one who is still like savage, barbarian, lower step. And so now little by little, let's teach him. Well, we take his customs, and we're going to write them down, make a nice code, you know, and uh, then he will be up to the level. So you see also the implication of all this when you talk about development and so on. What are you talking about when you talk development? Is there only one way of being, of a leading or a happy and fulfilling human life? Huh? These big questions. And so Panikar says we need another kind of dialogue, especially in intercultural settings. But you can apply it even with your brother or sister, even, if, even there sometimes it can be very useful to switch. You start to be like, no, no, you're wrong, no, you're wrong. Oh, huh? well, maybe you're talking from a different perspective, maybe you're talking from a different point of view. And so he says dialectical dialogue is very useful, very useful, and very important 
when we share the same premises and when we're clear about this. We say, okay, let's do some mathematics, that's our basic foundations, now we dialogue, yes, very useful. When this is not the case, what is important is not so much the object we talk about, it's the subjects. Let's talk, and he gives in a very influential article, it's Panica, Emon Panica. He was a great philosopher of, um, spent decades of his life working on interreligious and intercultural dialogue. He was Indian and Spanish. His mother was Spanish, and uh, his mother, no, his father was Indian, his mother was Spanish, he was also Catholic and Hindu at the same time. So he worked a lot on this question of intercultural dialogue. And um, so he says, when we dialogue between different cultures, so the important thing is the dialogue between the subjects. So in a very important article, uh, Human Rights, a Western Concept, he tries to have a dialogue between the Western ideal of human rights with the Indian world. And he says, it's not such a good idea to ask if the Indians have human rights. Now I talk about the classical Indians. He says, we have to see, do they have something similar in their worldview? And then again, you know, you cannot just translate one word, because the whole vision is different. So the question in their system as a whole, is there something equivalent to what exists in the West as human rights? And he says, when you start to do this, when you start to realize that what is the myth of the other person, what is his presuppositions? And by getting aware of those, you start to get aware that you have your own presuppositions, you have your own mythos. What are your human rights? What are you saying? What? Human rights? I don't know. What is human rights? Law? I don't, I don't know. No, but, but what do you... Dharma. What is Dharma? So if you take it seriously, little by little, you start to see that these invisible horizons start to become conscious. And so for this, I'm not going to develop this very much. He then says what we need is a diatopical hermeneutics. Hermeneutic science of interpretation, which goes through the different topoi, the different places where worldviews and discourses are located. 